Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to episode 86 of my Anno 1800 Let's Play. Now in the last episode, I did a general improvement to the Island of Swords, adding in a brand new museum and tidying up a few places near the tourists. I also decided to focus on a really old problem, which was that we've got a very minor gas shortage for the past several episodes, and it's kind of finally caught up to me. So, to improve it, I built two new gas mines in the Arctic, but we're still slightly behind where I want it to be. So today, we'll have to deploy a new Arctic Lodge to squeeze the last little bit out of the glacier of Standelspring, and also improve husky production to keep all of our technicians working. Now, before we get into the gameplay, a new DLC has released, the Industrial Zone Cosmetic Pack. Now, I mentioned it in the previous episode that this would be a fantastic pack for our factory island of Lusk. That's where I do almost all of my production. So I present to you the longest time-lapse I've ever done and the complete island overhaul of Lusk. Let's begin. All right, everyone, just a word of warning. This is a 25 minute time lapse. It is super long. So I'll leave timestamps in the description, which should be on the video player for you to kind of like skip ahead uh, just to get back to the gameplay if you're not interested in time lapses or if you get bored during it. I tried to cut out as much filler as possible. And trust me, there was many hours put into this. So I thought I was including everything that I think is interesting to see and the biggest developments, but some minor stuff I kept to the side and didn't really showcase. So, basically, this is an entire island overhaul, which I haven't done in a long time, and this is one of my most complicated islands. So, I literally just rotated my camera to have the Docklands to my south, and just pushed up and up and up and up, going trade union by trade union, redoing every single area and i'm happy to say it got a little bit of extra optimization out of it even just by understanding like some buildings were placed in the wrong area they weren't actually connected to power or they weren't in the zone of uh, influence of a trade union or the one that i really missed was a lot of my trade unions weren't connected via a road to the palace the local department palace so they weren't getting that extra 16 percent productivity so i was able to downsize a bunch of buildings because of that once they were connected and that freed up some extra workers so it was quite nice uh, always seeing the little efficiency bonus you get. So, obviously this is a production island. It's hard to make an island like this look good. You're beholden to the trade unions. You have to ultimately stack everything around them to get those efficiency bonuses. So it's still going to be, you know, built around those uh, around trade unions as a priority. However, with the Industrial Zone Cosmetic Pack, we now have tons of new ornaments to kind of mess around with. And um, instead of showcasing them in the episode, I'll just be talking about them here throughout the time-lapse as you see me placing them down. So the very first bottom right of the island is basically done now. This entire fur section supported by the wool industry that's over by the sheep. And all the pigs, most of the pigs have been largely downsized. The sausages are all gone. I guess they all come in through Docklands and stuff. And then we've got our chemical factory <laughs> positioned nicely across from the, the livestock. But the chemical factory is anyway, I'm just moving everything down a block because I freed up some space. So everything's coming down about three or four grid spaces, moving them nice and down, getting the roads back in and then just making sure everything's connected and moving the power down with them because there was actually room for power to kind of come down a bit further. Now, the idea is with the new cosmetic pack is that we should have um, train stations and stuff. And because train stations don't actually work in the game, I want to build the train stations in and around the actual power stations because that's where it's going to look most natural. Trains are going to be pulling in there. So if you can kind of disguise the train stations in there, that's a good way to do it. So what I'm doing here is using the new ornaments. This is the, all the ornaments in this new industrial zone pack. They're called the railroad ornaments in the UI. And there's, as you can see, there's a bunch and there's variations even within them. Uh, for instance, the platform has two different types to it, one with a crane and one without. So there's a little bit of playing around with them, and, and obviously some of them have grass bases and some don't. Uh, mostly they use the concrete kind of tiling base that you have from the uh, industrial pack, I guess. Isn't that another cosmetic that's very similar to this? I can't actually remember the name of that one, but in the workers category... God, I'm losing my mind. I'm so sorry that I can't remember. Is that a different DLC? Bright Harvest, is it? It could be part of Bright Harvest. Yeah, I think it is. That's where that came from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Bright Harvest added the Industrial Zone pack, which is open right in front of me now. Yes. And that comes with a concrete tiling pack, uh, little tile. Now, I don't know. If you don't have that, do you not get that in the game then? Because that would suck. That would mean that your railway pack doesn't have the concrete base tile to it. So that would be really difficult. But anyway, I'm mixing the two. Both are basically interchangeable to me. You know, they're both industrial packs both building sites and all these different things, cranes, water towers, crates, 
bridges, etc. So, what I've done, very simply here, is created a construction site. There's a really nice new little wall ornament that goes all the way around, wraps around, has little street lights on it, and then I'm just placing down scaffolding and things like that. Now, the scaffolding's great. It's got multiple heights to it, it's got multiple lengths to it, so you can really dynamically make a sort of a scaffolding of any building you really want to. So, yeah, the idea here is just to create space where I know that eventually we might use this space, but for now, we can just put scaffolding there and make it look like, hey, whatever is going to go there, it's under construction right now. It's really, really good. So you might think, where am I ever going to just place random scaffolding? It's like, well, if you know that there's a place you're eventually going to expand to, it works really well to just put down a few extra scaffolding areas and, and kind of close it off as a construction site. Something else I was doing a lot of, there's this sort of tall coal storage building. I feel like it works really well nearer to the mines and also in between sort of supply warehouses because it's like, yeah, it's a coal storage, a specific storage for that area. And you can see them shoveling it in, taking it out or whatever. Looks really good. So you'll see me using that a lot. Now, because this is such a lengthy time lapse, I might go quiet at certain points, but you can pretty well, actually, we'll probably be talking for quite a bit. But just if I do go quiet, it's just because we're waiting to get to the next bit. So, around the trade union here in the center, I noticed that there's water piping. Now, who says it has to be water? It's colored green. So these chemical plants are also colored green because they're making, uh, I think, lacquer? Yeah, actually, it says lacquer is on it right there. So they're making this sort of paint kind of thing. Um, so I thought it worked really well there, you know, just placing loads of those water pipes in and around the trade union. You could imagine maybe they're inspecting the quality of it or something like that. I don't know. There might be a faucet or a tap that they can kind of, like, inspect it or check it or something. Um, so it seems to work at least in and amongst the buildings there. Uh, back at the sheep farm, I was just adding some of the... Uh, there's so many DLCs, I can't remember them all, but some of the... Again, I guess I think it was Bright Harvest. Now I'm starting to question whether the other stuff is Bright Harvest, but... You have that sort of agri-pack, right? Hay bales and things like that for the animals. So I'm putting down some of the train station ornaments now. Along the railway. Just in the middle where there's like a, a kind of a conjunction of multiple factories. So it's like, yeah, there's two separate trade unions on either side. So it seems like a good place to have this sort of railway station. This is where people would kind of congregate in the middle and it's right next to the power station where a train is actually pulling in. Now I slightly change this later so that I move up the actual uh, train station to cover where it turns into the power plant. So you'll see that in a moment. I think that looks much better that way. But it does mean that there's a gap in the roof. But I think it works. So on this area, across from the building site at the bottom of the island, it's a big open area with nothing going on, so I just decided I'm going to build a massive rail yard. So just have several of these station roofs, all these platforms, cranes, pulleys, all that sort of stuff, and just feed in several lines that aren't ever going to aren't ever going to be used. But you can almost use the line as a as an ornament because like why not, right? It's not going to be used by a train. It looks like a rail yard, and you can have them going off in all different directions as you can see and just they have that cool stopgap at the end of it to kind of like show where it ends. So I think it looks really good that way. Um, it's endlessly frustrating though that the railway can't be placed on concrete tiles. It just comes with a grass variant and that's it. It's not an ornament, it just always goes on top of grass. And there's nothing you can do about that, which is so bothersome to me because the whole pack, everything goes on concrete. Some stuff, granted, does go on grass. But I just wish they took the extra time to add like a railway version that was on concrete. Like how could you not do that? I actually really like this pack. There's tons of stuff in it. Um, and it, yeah, in terms of like packs, as packs go, it's got some of the most amount of things that any pack they've done before has, especially unique stuff. Uh, at least it feels that way from what I was looking around at. But it's like, damn, man, I always want that little bit extra out of them. All right, anyway, so you can kind of see it coming together here. We've got the kind of bookend to the platforms and then just loads of separate rail stations. So I've kind of cut it there just to move. We'll have a better look at the end, by the way. It'll kind of, I'll pause and show like everything. Or not pause, but just like idle on it, hide the UI as you normally do. So up here, I'm kind of trying to, one thing I wanted to do was get rid of a lot of the walls. When I first built Lusk and redeveloped it to make it look good, I built walls around every little area to kind of enclose every trade union. And I never really intended on doing that in the first place. So I've kind of scrapped that idea. I'm getting rid of a lot of the walls. Although I'm keeping them for this specific area. Because this is where the gold smelteries are. Um, so because of that, it's like, well, you know. You feel like this area should have walls. Be a little bit more guarded. A bit more secure. So these ones still have walls. And then I have walls going towards like the cliff edges and things like that. Rather than in between the factories themselves. 
Um, so basically just trying to get a good feel for wrapping around the trade union. I think I was able to get rid of a building I didn't need. Uh, I noticed in the statistics screen that I think chassis, there's too many chassis buildings or, or steam motor buildings, one or the other. So I got rid of one of them, so we just have the one now. Yeah, I think it was steam motor buildings actually. Uh, loads of wood veneers here. There's where we make our champagne, gold, wood veneers, and glasses. That's basically everything that gets made here. So one thing I'm doing as well, because I know that the new rail ornaments can uh, go over the railway line, I'm basically leaving a gap either side of the railway line. I also used to have two railway lines coming down. But I've, I figured I don't actually need that. It never got so complicated that you needed two. So I've just reduced back down to one rail line. And then I just frequently put the... Every time there's like a, a power station where the train's going to be pulling in, I just put the, the railway stations down there. It's nice as well to use the sewer systems. I use them at the back of the um, <clears throat> excuse me chemical plant. So the, the sewer, the pedestrian zone pack, another cosmetic DLC, also comes with canals but it also has these sewers so I use the sewers where I can at the back of the chemical factories mostly but they you'll see them dotted around every now and then it's like every now and then where wastage is coming out of the back of certain buildings and by the way it's hard to kind of get this across when you're just watching the time lapse but I actually put a lot of thought into where I put certain things I don't just randomly throw things down I try to make it make sense to, alongside the certain buildings where they're going so it's like I have like a lot of covered crates here because it's next to the gold. So I imagine like they're actually covering it. They don't want people to see maybe something like that, you know? Um, and then I use water pipes here. Basically water pipes near the edge of the... It's sort of... I, I don't know how gold is really refined, but I know that they use water to cool it down. So it's like, yeah, water pipes. It makes sense. And then we're also next to the water. Uh, on the edge, on the on the right. So it's like, yeah, they pull the water in from that area. So you can't really connect the water pipes to any buildings or anything else. So it just kind of feeds into the ground. But you can kind of see where it's like, hey, it gets exposed here. Maybe it's where they deal with pressure or fall off or excess or whatever. Try to build a lot of water towers around the uh, fire stations as well. And also water pipes. You'll see me frequently do that. Just because, yeah, that's where they should go, right? Anywhere there's an obvious sign of water. Um, so there is method behind the madness. I, ju I don't just throw things down randomly. Because the thought process always is... If you get down on the ground and you start walking around, you want things to look like it makes sense. That's always what I aim for, anyway. Alright, so that area is pretty much done. So that's two done. Two sections done. We're about halfway through the time lapse now. The next one is the massive iron smelter section. <clears throat> Excuse me again. Um, I actually managed to free up enough space where I was able to get another one of these in, if I wanted another one. Actually, two, but I decided against it. Instead, we'll be building scaffolding to show that you could add two more of these if you wanted in future, Darren, so I can look back and remember. And I tried to model the scaffolding after the buildings that we would build in their place. So obviously these buildings all look the same, so they have got a, a taller right side than they do a left side, at least with the way the camera is, camera is angled right now. So you build scaffolding so that it matches that. It's like scaffolding the same length, width, and then roughly taller scaffolding on one side than the other. And then it looks like, hey, they're all part of the same thing. Love that massive crane, by the way. That's one of the biggest ornaments that came in the pack. Works really well. Looks great. I did see if you could get into it. I zoomed in and uh, got down on the ground and clicked it. I was like, oh, maybe you can interact with it, but unfortunately you can't. <laughs> You never know where they're going to sneak in one of those sneaky um, uh, Easter eggs, as it were. So just extending the wall out, I actually brought it back in a little bit. It was a bit too far out, meaning that it didn't look straight enough. Um, and I wanted a dirt road as it goes back out into the... I, li I like the look of like dirt kind of coming in on top of the paving. For people who go out to the cliffs to have um, a whiz, I guess. I don't know why people walk out there elsewhere, or for any other reason. So yeah, I was doing a lot of this where I'd copy and paste the scaffolding and then just kind of move it and rearrange it to the shape that made sense for the building, like I was saying. So like you can see here, there's chimney stacks and stuff on the right. So on the right side, it goes taller than it does on the left. And that's basically to say like, hey, if you want to build more smelters here, we have the room to do it. And in the meantime, it looks like they're building them themselves. It's really quite nice. So I just copy and pasted another one of those because it is the same building, so that's totally fine. But I put a wall around that one because we had the space. 
And then obviously a coal storehouse next to all the iron. Do you get it? There's a reason. There's a reason behind everything. I do trial and error though. Sometimes I throw things down. I'm like, no, no, no. This wouldn't make any sense. So this was fun. I was, again, this is where I'm talking about like the railway cannot be placed on top of concrete. It would look so good if it did. I started adding a railway here just purely as an ornament to kind of say like, oh, maybe it's like a sort of a pulley system, you know, they move heavy materials because it's next to the steam motors. So it's like these are big, thick engines and stuff that they'd be ride, you know, riding along the rails as they move them in and out. There's, you're not going to lift that with people, I don't think. Um, so that's what, kind of why I was think what I was thinking of this area. I was like, oh, that'd be so cool. But then I, I think I ended up deleting it maybe off camera. <laughs> I don't know. It might be in the cut. Because I was like, oh, the grass just bothers me so much that we can't just have rail on top. Um, but it's kind of cool. Kind of cool idea, like a little railway uh, mini section next to where the steam motors are. Anything big and heavy, like the elevators and stuff like that. Adding a little sewer systems to the back of the iron smelters. Gotta be honest, don't know what would necessarily be going in there, but you could say it's actually just extra fall off from the chemical area. Now, normally when I'm building up a city, I'm always like, you gotta have it offset. It can't look like a grid. Change, just rotate the same buildings. If they're on, in a line, just rotate them. Make them look different in any way you can. But when it comes to the factory, obviously, aesthetically, it looks great when they're all like in a line, at least to me. It certainly feeds that OCD of seeing like all the buildings aligned in the same way, because this is a purpose-built factory for this kind of thing. So you'd imagine it'd be done this way. Speaking of factories, by the way, if you haven't caught it, have a watch of my Satisfactory Let's Play. I just started it just recently. There's three episodes as of recording this. I genuinely recommend starting from episode two or maybe even three because it's where it starts to get much better because in the first episode, it's just a little slow, but if you can stick with it, it does get better and better. And I've learned so much in it. I've played Satisfactory before. I love the game, love it. Um, but just in having that community resource of people giving me tips and comments and things, I've just already expanded so much more than I was originally planning or like in, in how I play. And I'm like, oh yeah, like you can do this, you can do this. Things make so much more sense now. So I'm loving it. I really hope more people check it out because I'd like to continue the series as much as I can because I really, really like the game. Uh, so this section was just completely freed up by me moving the buildings around. Didn't have to get rid of anything. It just freed up a bunch of space. So I decided just to make three basically random scaffolding buildings. These aren't modeled after anything. They're just there as like buildings like, yeah, something can go here in future if we need to. Obviously when the next two DLCs come out for the season four pack, maybe we'll I'll have to make something back here. I'm assuming something has to be built back here, even though it is focused on the new world. It's probably something going to go on. Now, I put down railway platform here, even though there's no railway. I think it just looks really good as like a little platform. It's got a crane on it and stuff. So I think it kind of makes sense for like loading and unloading from this whole section. It's like people bring their stuff up here and we unload it. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's the other thing. It's like, who says it has to be a railway platform? Just because it says it in the name doesn't mean that's what it is. It's just a platform. People standing on it. <laughs> Could be anything. Could be a bus stop. So, something I've noticed with this, the construction fence, not to have a go at the team, but the construction fence is interesting because one side looks different than the other. The back of it, you can see the boards that are propping up the actual construction fence. So its facing direction actually does matter, but it also comes with street lights, which can be facing either direction, which can, and they seem to be get like randomly placed along the, however else you drag it, cause you can actually change How's the best way to describe it? Basically, you can put down the fence and then you can say, okay, rotate the modules. And let's say module number five has a street light on it or whatever, has something on it. And then you turn, you change it and then you change it back. It'll have something different. So there's multiple variations within the same module number. So it's one of those ones where you have to like drag and drop it a few times to see if you can get like the different things out of it. Um, which is kind of annoying. Like, I don't know why, you, why wouldn't you just make it a separate numbered module? I don't know why you do that. Like, why not just say it has 16 variations rather than hide some of the variations within the same things? Like, I get sort of the logic behind it, but it makes it tedious if you're trying to like beauty build in some way. 
Because you're like, oh, I can put the fence down. If I put it down the exact same way, it looks different. It's like, okay. <laughs> so that's just little first, super first world problems, I guess, of Anno 1800. But I actually love the fence. <laughs> it looks really great. Um, and it comes with all these like things. You'll see like cloth draped over it, different signs and stuff. So it actually looks really good. It's really personalized. Uh, so basically here, another railway station, part of the railroad ornaments or the industrial zone pack. Obviously there are tons of railway ornaments. Now, I don't know much about trains. Funnily enough, I'm planning on starting a series as we get to the end of this month in a game called Sweet Transit, which I think looks awesome. If you don't know the game, quickly look it up on Steam or your platform of choice. I think it's on Epic as well. Um, and it's basically, it had a, it had a next fest demo and it's basically Anno meets something like Railway Empire, if anyone's ever played that, or similar to a game like Open TTD, but less complicated and with nicer graphics. It's definitely got that, and it's definitely like trying to be Anno in some ways, but it's like Anno with trains where the only way you can move stuff is with trains. And it's logistics is actually much deeper than something like Railway Empire. You actually, the, the length of the platform matters, the direction you come in, uh, things like that. And you move people around and goods, stuff like that. So I'm really looking forward to that game. I hope people like it too. I really, really want to be able to get the developer to send it to me early so I can be on time with it and have it nice, like nicely out on time. And I've played it a little bit now in my spare time. So with the Steam Next Fest, so hopefully um, I can get in contact with them. It's published by Team17. As far as I know, it's an early access game, I think. Um, but anyway, yeah, you deliver goods to houses and communities and then they get certain goods and they, they like essentially grow their population based on that, just like I know. Anyway, back to this. Um, can't remember how I got onto that. But anyway, yeah, so with the fence there, you can actually see several fences. I'm like turning them around a lot of the time and you'll notice that the boards don't line up. It's another little pet peeve of mine, which is the facing direction is all different for them. So it can be a little messy. Oh yeah, so I was talking about railway ornaments, that's why. <laughs> well, basically I've just been putting them, down, putting them down almost randomly, but keeping consistency with every stop. So it's like, okay, if I've got a collection of four of them here, I'm gonna mirror that collection of four at the next railway station. So there's consistency, but I gotta be honest, I don't know how the signals are working in this little uh, run. Um, anyway, we've had this kind of greenery area out this way. So I added the wine stands and like some ornaments to the workers because it's a bit more of a high, a higher upper class more modernity area they're making their elevators here they're making the artisanal wines and cognac and things and the buildings actually are a lot more upper class and nicer they've got like built-in hedgerows and all these kind of things so i thought it would make sense in that area to keep the greenery give them a little something back a little wine celebration here and there the cider stall they'll be fine they shouldn't be drinking on the job it's for when they're clocking out in the evenings maybe the sun in the summer the sun's setting they're having a little drink that's fine while well, they're waiting for their um commuter ship to come in and pick them up you know so don't worry they ain't drinking on the job but uh just a little reward for them over in this area at least so again this is pretty much as we're wrapping up towards the end now like i said we'll have a, a little cutscene in a moment of each different area uh with no ui so we can really soak it in hopefully this is a good time lapse i know it's super long and the episode's probably going to be super long now i've just gotten done recording the episode it's great fun, by the way, what's going to be happening with the Arctic. Quite enjoyed it. Um, but I realized I went way over for time because this one is super long and I forgot how long it was. Uh, so you can just see I've got like several railway stations like all over the place. I think maybe in the next one, if I do another one, because it might be a while before I do another one. I'm kind of thinking of waiting for DLC to come out. I'll explain it later on the episode if you make it, but I'm thinking of doing Anno 1404 just straight away, just doing a little campaign in that. So again, made a secondary railway station out towards the commuter pier, sort of a stopgap for the actual uh, trains themselves as well on the opposite side of the island. Last thing I'm doing here is just, there's a ton of extra storage out here and I managed to just fit it all together a little bit better, um, leaving a little bit of gaps every now and then. We'll fill them in, of course, with key side. And then trying to make, you know, docks as it were, makeshift docks, make it look a little, little good, have some of those commuter ships or the, um, the Artisan, oh my god, again, Docklands pack, I guess. It came from the Docklands pack, the extra, extra cosmetic ornaments. There they are, adding in some of the floating buoys and the extra ships, and then some of the smaller fishing ships that kind of have their own little piers and docks. 
just nestling them in there. So it actually, I actually freed up a ton of space, which means I could have put down even more storage if I really wanted it, but I don't need it. We've got almost 4,000 here, so it's, it's fine. But it's so cool. That's one of the most satisfying things with this is going over everything, just cleaning things up a little bit, and then you see like, oh, I've got extra work for us. Oh, I've got extra space and stuff. So it's like, oh man, it really does help to come back over things. And then again, just building bigger scaffolding areas for these large giant spots where it's like, I've got nothing here. Oh, I feel I freed up. A, I had two factories making biscuits. Didn't need it. Only needed one. So I freed up a whole building there as well, which is pretty good. And that's basically going to be it. So we can just kind of see the various areas. Here we have our Docklands, the first construction site there right in front of us with the train yard right across from it. It's just a massive empty space for us to do something with in the future. Uh, more building sites around the bicycle factory. We then have our local department with the train station right outside it. They have slightly nicer stuff around their platforms uh, because it is the palace where people are probably getting off a little mini tourist destination. And we can see our train pulling in through the station here into the power plant, kind of hiding slightly the fact of what's going on there. And then just, yeah, various other railways and stuff. Look forward to seeing what people think. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, the complete beautification of the island of Lusk. Now, it's always very difficult to make a production-focused island in any way sort of beautiful, but with the Industrial Zone Cosmetic DLC, I certainly had a lot more options in how to build things out, and the scaffolding for those empty slots where things are going to go in future, or maybe room for expansion, is such a perfect thing to do. I used to just flatten it with concrete, now it looks far better. Now, I'm sure with such a long time lapse, I've more than covered enough about this island. Let's get out of here and move on. I've got four airships waiting by the Docklands to pick up various goods because we're going to the Arctic. If you remember at the beginning of the episode, I said we have the glacier island of Steindlsbreen, which was named by a viewer many, many episodes ago. On this island, we built a second gas mine and then a third gas mine. But while I was building up the factory, we had to turn this one off because our technician workforce fell down due to a lack of huskies. So I was kind of looking into the problem behind the scenes, seeing what was going on in between episodes. And it's effectively, we have a trade route that comes all the way up to the Idiot trading post and constantly is purchasing huskies and seal skin and anything we can get here that is in any way useful for us. So that's doing that. We're getting a little supplemental amount of huskies and stuff. So I thought what I could do is basically just trade union it. Um, put down some arctic lodges and see what items we need in order to really boost production. So huskies are created here in our husky beavers. farm and we're actually full up on it because in the statistics screen if we have a look at I guess intermediates would that be huskies? Agriculture? There they are. It's two for two. It's dead even so it's totally fine but we're, remember we're buying a supplemental extra amount. Same with bear fur, I want to say. Let's just double check that at the Inuit. Yes. So I think that's what's helping me keep going. I'm really at my limit where it's like I'm just on the right on the line, right on the edge. Um, but I'm able to buy things from the Inuit and that's able to kind of um, push me over the edge as it were and keep the economy afloat. So adding more to this, adding more people, this is why it's such a headache because I'm just really constrained. I would need a whole other island, but someone else is in control of them. So we're forced to kind of make do with what we have. But what we can always do is we've gotten more influence. We've gotten new uh, airships for trade. So we can always just... Hey. That just went away. Okay. It's just because we bought it all, I guess. It just went away and then came back. Anyway, yeah. So let's go over to Old Nate. See what kind of items we can make or see what can be used to improve. What I was thinking of doing. See, initially I actually thought like, oh, we could just copy and paste this and pop it right there and it's right in range of getting heat the little heat pipe ends right here so we'd still be able to do it we'd be able to add another one but i just have no room for extra workers however we do have 25 explorers for lack of a better term chilling and uh, we could always upgrade them and get about 40 technicians but it's not really enough we need more than that we need 80. now i also noticed there's two options on the table we could do either boost husky production itself because I do think that's the only thing that's missing or boost the population itself because I've never put down a an arctic lodge in any of these areas there's no arctic lodges on this entire island actually which is kind of crazy when you think about it but I, I guess I've just never had the influence there are arctic lodges up where our glaciers are right there's one uh, or maybe multiple here so there's 
two on this island, one in the center of the workforce and the population, and one here to get more out of the gas mines. So what I was thinking of doing personally was doubling down on this idea of just boosting the huskies, and then also... Um, uh, sorry, boosting the gas mine. Yeah. So that's basically what I'm planning on doing. I'm just double... I'm so indecisive. Even with all this time between the episodes, I'm not 100% sure if I should just try and boost the population instead. I guess what the question I have in mind now is how many things affect Husky Sled Factory. So let's have a look. I haven't looked at the items yet. So we'll just type in Husky Sled Factory. Let's do that one first. So productivity 40% and we get some workforce back. Love it. Bone ads, which I think we have already, don't we? There's actually one here already. So let's just get started. Let's just quickly build an Arctic Lodge. And we'll move this down. There's no problem with that, right? Yeah, we can just move that straight down. Pop the Arctic Lodge just somewhere right in the middle. Just close this up a bit, just for now, so we can see it. All right, so Arctic, oh uh, no, not Arctic, <laughs> Husky. Husky sleds, there we go. So we just freed up 180 workers just like that. What else do we have? Sled 35% productivity on the sled frame factory and the husky sled factory. Now that's the same for this. But of course, we're just increasing the production of the sled factories, not necessarily the huskies themselves. So we got to match that pro um, that as well. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything for that. I mean, this is pretty great. Not going to lie. But it's not quite what I want. So let's just get rid of this. Husky farm is what we want to bo boost. Husky farm productivity 40% and extra caribou meat. Husky farm and hu goose farm. Workforce needed 50%. Maintenance cost 15%. Hmm. So productivity 15 So that's 40% on the... Let me just have a look at the actual chain. So we just boosted that and we boosted this, but we did not... Oh yeah, we've also boosted that. Sweet. <laughs> so, this is every minute, that's every two minutes, and that's every one minute. I see. Well, boosting both by... Yeah, I don't know, I can't do that math. Let's just have a look at it. So we're short on huskies, but we should have more than enough sleds now. The sleds are way overproduced now. We can get rid of one of the buildings and put down another husky farm, right? That would make sense. Now we do pull in extra huskies from the Inuit, so it's probably actually enough. Maybe I should just leave it. I think that's probably all we need to do. Um, it's I'm definitely missing something. I know it for sure. So 40% plus 40%. So this is going to get boosted. Everything's boosted up that 40%. But this one also has the 35. And so does this. So this one gets just 40. And this gets 75. So it's like, yeah, we could make even more huskies if we put down another one of these. We freed up the workforce now. There's no reason not to. If you really wanted to, could do it. Um, but I guess I don't need to. So I'll just leave the wheat workforce free. Because I feel like we might fall short of something else soon. We'll see, though. It's kind of nice that we're getting the extra caribou meat. Because that can go straight into the uh, pemmican cookhouses. And we're actually full up on that. That's just good to know. Nice little efficiency bonus. All right, anyway, let's get out of there. So the next one is to boost the gas mine. Now we could also boost the workforce here, thus reducing some of the housing, thus reducing some of our demand. Um, because I was thinking of doing it out, out by the other one, but I suppose, why wouldn't we do it here? So an Arctic Lodge in here, right there, would be pretty good. So let's just say, see you later to two of these. <laughs> and put the Arctic Lodge in its place. Overlapping radius. Oh, I have it here already. Well, sorry guys. Oh, I have no, I have no recollection of saying that I was going to do that. I must, I must have obviously pre-prepared it. All right, cool. In the last episode. Right, so we need to deliver items that we're going to get from Nate. So let's see, is what do we need? Rag, or is it bound you're wanting? Well, we could just look really quickly. I already know when it's on the other island, right? So. At the very least, we're going to need the Gritty Gas Extractor and the Music Box. So let's just go over to Nate really quickly. And let's have a look at what's needed for that. So the Gritty Gas Extractor... Break out my pen. 50... Um, scrap, or whatever. So 20 gas. 5 cowchuck. And 10 steel. So that's easy. 
I've got the gas already. I can easily do that. Oh, I mean the um, scrap I think I got between episodes. I've been busy boy. Um, but the other one then was what? See, I have such a horrible memory that I've actually forgotten in that time already. It is the music box. All right, music box. There it is. Music box is an extra productivity on all buildings, 20%. Uh, and that's just going to require 10 wood. So 10 wood, easy enough for that. And then it's going to be 10 scrap. That's fine, don't have to worry about it. So that's 60 scrap in total. Put a little circle around that. Now, we'd also like to boost the population just a smidge. So we only have room for one more slot. So let's see what they need or what we could use. This lowers Arctic flu chance and reduces the consumption of pemmican. That's fine, we don't need that. Workforce, 15%. Arctic flu chance goes down a bit. And then this goes... Arctic Flu Chance Bonus Income and Parkas. Hmm. Residents provide bonus income from Parkas. Reduce consumption of Parkas by 30%. Uh, I guess we'll go with the radiator. That's the one I need. More than anything. So the radiator. Right there. And that's going to require 10 brass. Oh, I think we've got everything then. I think I have enough scrap for this. Because it's only 10 scrap as well. 10 brass. Okay. So that's 70 scrap needed in totes. Let's just check how much I've got in here. Construction material. Uh, 60 foe. So we need to go up there and we need to find at least six more. Now some people were saying, hey, you should just use mods and cover the fog, blah, 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 etc. Appreciate the advice. I'm just never going to use mods in this series. Uh, it's a super long running series. It's just unpredictable if a mod could break something or whatever. So I just don't want to even risk it, even with the most basic of things. I understand that's very basic, but something that is a very long running series super old save like 300 hours into it almost now like there's something crazy i just don't want to mess with that um because i've had it go wrong before and if, you know so once you get burned a couple times in other games even though i understand game dev i understand well i don't understand this game's engine actually to be honest but certain mods i know that they can largely just be turned on and off and they shouldn't affect anything just don't want to risk it so let's just leave it and plus it gives me the benefit of always saying don't worry there's no mods just this is just how i play the game Vanilla, and you can too. All right, so let's get what we missed. Um, so, 10 wood, 10 brass. Now, it was, was it, it was timber, right? Well, we've already got some up there. We don't need to do that. Uh, 10 brass. There's probably some of that up there already as well, but I'll just bring this manually. We need cow chuck, which is an agricultural project uh, product. We only needed five. Okay, 10 steel. And then we just needed 20 gas. Which I don't know if it's here. No, it's in the other island. Is that it? That's all we needed. Wow. Pretty good. And just the 10 wood. All right. We'll just go pick up that gas. And then we'll be on our way. With the other three ships, we'll go to the Arctic and we'll uncover the fog of war. And uh, try to find that last little bit of scrap. We're only missing eight or six or something. So it's not too much. Just while they're taking off now, we can have a look at the place at night. I noticed that the train stations look really cool at night time, but obviously our trains don't go in there. Still looks cool though. The busiest road like ever is down here. You just see all the little lights. Look how crazy it is. Running at a sweet 60 FPS though, looks good. And you just focus in on one little area like this. You don't have to worry about stuff too much. All right, nice. Working all through the night. Let's just make it a little earlier. There we go. All right, is our ship up here yet? Bing. Give me the gas. So we needed 20 gas. All right, off you go. Up to old Nate. All right, so while we're doing that, let's just head over to the Arctic ourselves. Just want to... There's ruins in our cities. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's a fire all the way out here. And actually, there's no fire station. I'll have to move that at some point. This is the island of Rush across from Swords, our capital. They'll be fine. All right. So, we have 180 extra workforce on this island now. We've got a bunch of stuff here upping the productivity. So, while I've got a bit more time now, while things are happening in the background, let me indulge in the statistics screen just for a moment. Uh, let's go all Arctic. Let's have a look at what we're producing as a... Okay, so we're producing three per minute huskies. 
and we're consuming four. That's okay though. Let's just see how that goes. We are bringing in a supplemental amount of huskies, probably to the tune of one ton per minute. I, I don't know the exact amount because we're just buying them, but that seems fine. Probably. <laughs> um, so then there's the sleds. The sleds are good to go. They're in tandem with the sled building. And then the sled building is producing way more than we need. So that's why I'm like, oh, even though we're short on huskies, even if we ran out a little bit, we're still overproducing by so much that I'm sure it's okay. Like this building seems to be doing fine. The parkers would be one I'd be a bit more worried about. Now that we've got more f um, room on this island, maybe we could get more parkers going. So we needed, how do we make them? So we need bear fur, fur and seal hunting. So that's going to be 1 minute 30, 30 seconds, and 1 minute 30. Now we have some bear fur. Are we full up? No, we're not. Now we also bring in some extra bear fur. Bear fur. I'm struggling to say that. Two tons per minute. But we're not producing everywhere for some reason. Something's not right. We would be producing enough, but some island is obviously not having its stuff taken away. And it's Desperation Bay. There it is. So Desperation Bay is over here. And we must have a little bit of bear hunting on this island. Yeah, there it is. So we never picked this up. And that's causing a little problem. How's the seal stuff here? That does get picked up. There's also no docks. Maybe it'd be good to get a docks. Am I completely out of my mind? Where is the docks? The storage for docks? There it is. Okay, it's in the technician's thing. I didn't Your realize. Ship has returned from its Just throw that down. They've only got um, storage of 100 or 75, this so now they got a bit a more. Magnet for genius. Are other airships here? They are. Let's just send them up to the Fleet very corner route. of the map, and then we'll move them back down. All right, sweet. Yeah, sure. Let me find what you're missing. What are you missing? Something here? Maneuvering. This guy's here now as well. So what I'll probably do is set up a new trade route with the airships. Kind of need to overhaul that a lot as well. Actually, not overhaul it completely, but change a couple things. Does this island get full of anything? Um, so yeah, it does fill up on a few things. Bear fur primarily. But there's no more room for seal hunting or anything like that. So, seal. So yeah, this is the one that goes out to the island. It picks up... That's interesting, yeah. Picks up goose feathers. So I feel like actually... Yeah, it's not picking up nearly enough. I was going to say, goose feathers, you're not going to be picking up that much. So at Desperation Bay, we'll pick up the bear fur. And that should be fine then, to bring that around. Okay. Don't think there's any here, but there's more seal skin on that island. 150. So that just completely fills up, and this has 150 on it. Okay. Interesting. But yeah, we'll just keep this consistent and leave it as bare for... So going to three places with 50 tons. I wonder is that going to be enough? Or do we need its... Does it need its own ship on it, you know? Because that's what the airships are kind of for. But we'll just leave it the way it is, see how that goes for a while. So basically, that's the bear fur. And then the last thing then was parkas, right? So it needs parka production. A parka factory. Negative 80. So we could build a couple of these, and we've got the room for them now. And again, another great place for an arctic lodge, but I'm, I'm hurting for influence now again. So let's move that over here. Let's get another bear thing. The Parker Factory. The so with four Parker Factories, is that enough to supply everybody? It's actually not. God damn. We'd need another one. Which we can do, but then it's like the raw resource must be struggling so much at that level. You just slam it there for a moment. Just want to get that number correct so that would do it so that's what we need so basically you just need to now fulfill having the right amount of bear fur which we are bringing in extra so that might be okay and then seal skin which also we're bringing in extra so that might be okay but there is um 
Again, something wrong here, where so certain places aren't being picked up. I'm guessing it's just, yeah, Desperation Bay makes six. Fort Worry. So where's Fort Worry? Here? And this is part of the route, right? Didn't they just come by here? I kind of find that hard to believe that they're full. That must mean that that ship actually, yeah, because we produce it in several different places. Oh, also, it's just been full on this island for a long time. That's probably why. Okay, I'll leave it the way it is then. That might be okay. That might actually be okay. <laughs> we'll see. All right, sorry for all that. I think, long story short, I've just added extra parka factories. That might be all that's required. Oh, actually, there's no heat here. Huh, interesting. Uh, okay, well, you can just go there then, I guess. No big deal. These don't need heat, so going there might be better. We'll just move this real quick. Can we just go there? And this way things can be kept together a little bit nicer. Let's get these facing the right way. Alright, Parker factories are all together. That's good. This one's the only one that's the outlier, but, you know, what can you do? You can't have it all. <laughs> that's fine. All right, cool. Um, so, let's make these items and squeeze that last little bit out of the Arctic. So, let's go and leave the steel behind. we got to pick up the scrap. So, caoutchouc, steel, and gas. Caoutchouc, steel, and gas. Let's just leave the brass. I just hope it doesn't... Can I put it on another ship? Might just put it on another ship, because I don't want it to be consumed or something. So, just do that. And then we needed 50. I think that does it. Alright, meanwhile... All right, we got three. We only need a tiny bit more. So let's just comb the area with these guys. We'll just fan out. Speed it up for a sec. And we'll start moving. So basically just looking for maybe one or two more boxes. I got pretty lucky in between episodes because I actually found three boxes stacked on top of each other. It's like they just spawned on the same spot. Um... And it was like 4, 4, and 2 or something. So I just got like, you know, over 10, like, or 10 immediately. Which is quite nice. What the hell is this? Is there another one here? That's just the shadow from this one. And this is what I did. I just came up here with four of them in a line and just combed over the whole thing. I had full visibility. It was great. <laughs> I'm not seeing any now, though. Jeez. Goddamn. Maybe it's all gone for a while. Really? Still nothing? Holy crap. Man, we've been unlucky today. Hope I haven't missed some. Sometimes you see them on the edge of the fog. There's one right there. There's another one. So we got four. That might be enough. Let's just get that other last one. That could be it. Yes, there we go. All right, cool. That's enough. Let's go back. Fleet on the move. All right, we've got a bit of a blockade going on there. All right, let's pay a little visit to Nate. So what were we looking for? The gas, gritty gas extractor. We've got everything for that right now. That's it. Boom, transmuted, done. All right, let's fly over to Steinvelsbreen. Set them up with that, and we should see well, I won't give it to them just yet, actually, but we should... Actually, yeah, you just stay here. We should see that our gas finally goes up to the level it needs to be at. Altitude stable. I, there's, I can't hear anything other than the beautiful music. There we go. We're just drifting. 
Looking forward to the season four airships, seeing what they're going to do with those for the new world. It's going to be interesting. Something to do with the mail system, etc. as well. All right, we're here. So you didn't have any on you. You have seven now in total. Right, so you've got 12. We only needed, uh, we needed 20, right? So we can get that now. So there we go, 20. Leaving six behind. So we needed the brass that's on our little ship down here. So throw that up, <laughs> just lob it up to the one up above. The oyster catcher, so that's 10 brass. And then we also needed 10 wood, and that's it. 10 timber. I think that's it. On course. Now we'll just speed it up for this last little bit. Hey, has that population fallen? I think it might have. 1029980. Engineers, their income's falling. Let me just hop over to see what's going on. You're out of rum. Mmm. <laughs> Another problem, eh? But yeah, I wonder what the hell's going on here. This should be at 103 something. I'll have to look back through the footage and see when it fell. Not that it would make much of a difference to know exactly when, but something's happened somewhere. Although there are ruins. Could it just be that? It could be partially that. Hmm. I don't think that's the full story, but maybe. There's a few damaged here. There you go. Oh my god, it's actually a load. Maybe it is this. Uh, that might be it, actually, then, yeah. <laughs> they burned to death. Okay. Back we go. Soldiers had no use. So, um, we wanted the radiator done. And the music box. Okay, music box, radiator, and then we'll just give that. Oh, we don't. Have, yeah, we'll just give it to the other ship, real quick. All right, cool. We'll make our way up here. So I'm hoping that husky sleds. Oh shit! I've, they've actually fallen below the population requirement for it. Damn it! That's all right. So we'll have to build a couple extra houses, build them up to that point. We'll just put the ones back that I destroyed before, mistakenly. Um, Ah, you're not doomed. Stop being such a baby. There you go, three of them. Although, we're about to get the extra workforce now, actually, but we need the population, right? Isn't it different? You need the population to hit a certain threshold. We're almost there. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So your gas mines are buffed, the radiator, and this. So we're up to 76. So that's productivity, workforce plus 15 for explorers and technicians. So I'll just take that away. So we go from 36 to 76. Arctic flu chance goes down. So this should stay a bit lower. Good. And that is, this is in the circle. So, 40% extra productivity, also producing zinc and copper as a byproduct. Not that we need it. Um, but we just need to wait for these houses to grow now. I wonder how actually oil lamps are doing with this increased population. I, I seem to remember in the past that was a difficult one to maintain. Uh, but yeah, until we get to... 750, which we'll do when we get these houses done. That's going to be difficult. We'll be here to eternity at this rate. So I can't turn that one on yet. So right now, if we look at all islands, construction material, we go to gas. Hey, we're producing enough. Oh, that's, <laughs> it seems that way. But it's because we've got one of them off, right? We need this one turned Stop on. Stop the machines. That's the one that's the problem. Because <laughs> we've got four back home, one here in Crown Farms. And we're just a little short. We need it to go to it's something like eight is required. Yeah, so eight tons per minute. We're just producing under seven. But definitely when we turn that other one on, that's got to be it, right? It's 
got to be it. We just need the population to go up to 10, and then we're good. So, let's buy our island back from Arthur. Let's get rid of these. Let's get rid of those. And top back here. So, idle ships, please. Just chill out here. Um, so we got 34 influence. I think some of it is still on the propaganda. Yeah, just 10 of it. Not that much. Just in case things go wrong. It was very unfair. I saw like a fire happened and I put the fire out and it was fine. Didn't damage any buildings before and it was like, you know, negative 10% consumption on the on the news article being like, hey, there was a fire. It's like, come on. I mean, I guess you could have fire chance down to zero everywhere. Seemed a bit harsh. It's not like it propagated and burned anything. It didn't even burn anything or like destroy anything. I felt a little hard done by it. All right, we're very close. We just need to go to 10 and then we'll get to 750. We need 750 technicians specifically. Then the, uh, yeah, actually, I just realized. Let's just turn on Husky Sleds. There actually isn't even any here, so nothing's going to happen yet. So we got to follow the chain. We're on triple, triple speed now. 85 out of 650. So who's delivering it? You're supposed to be. It goes to Hope Fell first, which still has some. Yeah, not much I can do about that. <laughs> it's such a complicated route. It goes back and forth so many times. I don't want to get messing with that now, though. If I am to change this, I would just do it behind the scenes because it's just so messy. You could delete all the routes and reroute everything now with the additional um, airships that I have, but I think it's I think it's okay. It is messy for sure, but it works. You know, it's worked for a very long time. It's only now that we're expanding that I look at it and I go, "Ooh, it is messy." So you got thirty nine on board. And you're going up to Hopefell. So I guess what I could do is say, okay then, load some back up. Just a little. And we'll set a, a little threshold to say... Don't consume, like, I don't know. 150? 150 in the you bank. So we'll take... As long as you got 150, we'll leave you as 150. But we're going to take anything else. So this ship should come in now with its 39. And actually leave with more. In theory. So there we go. The one thing I, I guess actually that is a problem with this route is that um, we are throwing some stuff overboard. Oil refinery in swords. Oh my god, one of the gas mines is blown up. Because there's no oil, there's no oil, oil refinery. It might be one of the actual. Oh my god, the docks might be on fire. Oh shit, that is a decimation of the economy, the having that blow up. The fire is vanquished. Is this working again? What's the problem? Negative 2,000. Oh my god, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Okay, we must have fallen short with the uh, tourists for a while there. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get this back up. Something must have gone wrong. We, they must have become unhappy for a while. Souvenirs? Are you kidding me? After all we've done. <laughs> with souvenirs. Oh, it is low. That might have been it. God damn. It's always these tourists. Why is it the tourists that always elude me for some reason? How do we not have enough souvenirs? We've got loads. 31 to 27. They're all produced, being produced. Nothing's stopping them. I know that all the raw materials are fine. I actually checked it just not that long ago. I have to check the routes again, maybe. There's two ships that deliver souvenirs up here. Souvenir delivery. Okay, and then... Coming in with 150 when you could have brought in 300. This last Why is that? There's something in his eyes. A shadow. Tantalizing. Thrilling almost. But dangerous. 
175 down at the other place now. The Cloudburst is on its way to pick that up, though. Well, pick up as much as you can. I guess I was leaving it for more stuff. Well, though, it should be fine. 150 is plenty. That's your job. Your job is to just bring souvenirs here. That's it. I mean, there isn't even 300 to pick up, so I don't know why I've done that, but I don't know. Just for the future, if we get a good delivery in. Anyways, what was I doing right before that? Something here, right? Oh, we were watching the thing come in. Yeah, so husky sleds are now up to 100. Nice. Good. Good. <laughs> okay. So, let's let them consume them. Which sounds weird. You know what I mean, though. Oh, shit, you're too far from the canteen. Oh, that house was never in a good position then. How did that ever rank up at all? Uh, where can I stick you then that would make you happy? The canteen is all the way down here. I can't okay, that's gone to 100. So we just do the same with this one then. Does this have a... Feel some of my limbs. Oh my god, I didn't realize that this house doesn't have a reach either. It's a 15. Oh no. No, canned food is fine. You're just not eating it for some reason. Picky. Alright, good. Upgrade. You can almost upgrade. Just speed up time, get you upgraded, and we should be good. To unlock those huskies. Alright, that is huskies. Unlocked. The population should soar now, and we can turn back on the gas mines. Are you within the... You're not. I see. So three, these three houses I've just added aren't getting the little workforce benefit that we'd like them to. Um, I guess I could rearrange things a slight bit. Uh, so yeah, you can move out. You can come back in. I can make these roads just a bit nicer. People are miserable. Oh, shush. They're not miserable. You're miserable. You old bag. <laughs> I love that guy, actually. He's great. <laughs> Alright, good. How about that? Everyone's in the circle. Canteen's reach is hundo percento. You've got your warmth. Yeah? You're happy. This is a bold move, but we're going to try it. Alright, you're in now. Are you 100%? You should be. Just speed that up. Let them grow to their fullest potential. So, with that... Everything seems good now, right? You have your post office and everything. Everyone's fine with the what's near nearby. And I know you can check the statistics screen to see that kind of thing. It's, it works best usually when they're already full up. 901 out of 960 is what we got on the island. There's only technicians here. So if we see them not growing fully, there's obviously something wrong. They're all at 19. 90%, 90%. See, there's obviously something, some issue with these guys. 19 out of 20. What's your problem? What? Oh, they just got... Sorry, excuse me. They just got... To, um, the huskies now, didn't they? So, of course, that's their problem. All right. So, 343 three, extra workforce. Boom. We can turn this on. That's gas. That's all the gas mines. So, an excess of 93. We want to bring that down to be about 30 so that we can afford for one or two houses to maybe catch fire, whatever, get sick, and production never stops. So, we're at 98 right now. So, we'll just go back into population statistics. 48 houses, 955. Everyone is at... 20, these two are at 19, just because they're not ready yet. Okay, so that's the island done. That means, though, we're at 958, we can get rid of some of these houses. So these are a bit of a pain in the A, in the so we'll just get rid of some of them now. We had to have them there in the first place, so let's just see. That's fine. Let's get rid of the ones that look weirdest to me. So you can go. Um, I suppose you can go. And you can go, and we'll get this back in here. And that's 35. Yep. Yeah. So all that building was for now, as they say in England. 
but it, well, it was a temporary thing, but it was needed. So as long as, 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 long as we maintain huskies, which I think we will, <laughs> we'll see. But if we do, then this island's done. We've expanded it successfully. We've gotten the Arctic Lodge to boost the extra. And let's look finally. This is what it was all for. Eight to eight. We did it. Only barely. It is like 1% over the line of where it needs to be. There is a pixel on the eight there. On the blue. Now, interestingly, it says six out of eight. The, oh, that's because that blue... Did it blow up? No, it didn't, actually. It was the uh, old refinery that did. Why is it not consuming? Oh, it's not consuming because it's in... Um, it hasn't got its delivery yet. So, yeah, this one needs a delivery. But the fall-off is something like you need to first supply, like, a thousand to swords. And then we send the extra to Cape Trelawney. So we should see our population go up even higher. We're actually seeing it fall down fairly rapidly. And that's because of this, right? So they're back up and running now. I think they ran out of souvenirs for a sec, so we'll just whack that back up. So we still have plenty of tourists. This is at 4,700. Go all the way. 5,000. Still have tourists. Population should rise now back to where it was. But there's obviously a problem with that, how we're delivering these. So let me just check souvenirs. Really is like, I almost feel like you should wait to have 300 and just, well, not that it would really matter, right? If you're delivering as much as you've got, you're delivering as much as you've got. Yeah, it seems to be always bringing in 150. It's a very even amount, isn't it? 150? Twice the ship has had 150, exactly. So, souvenirs are made down here. This is where all my souvenirs are. You've got thousands. Ah, you're low on cotton. That could be it. Maybe they're stopping every now and then. Camphor, wax, and cotton is a bit low. And we actually bring that in on this ship. And he brings in 150. Hmm, plot thickens. Okay, well, let's just add another ship to this route and see would that change anything. I don't have any more ships. I have to make another one. Last thing I'll just do then for this episode is just quickly check everywhere. Cam 4 Wax. How are we doing? Loads. Although none of it's producing right now, which is interesting. I think all the islands that we take from are full. And then Cotton, which we've also got too much of. Okay, well, at least we have the buildings in place for it. But there's obviously just a little hitch in my logistics, yet again. So yeah, seeing this being offline so much. Look at this, 0% Guadalmina. It's just... It's just nothing. No one's taking it. So Camp 4 Wax. New World. Do you come over here to grab it? These ships do it. Yeah, look. There's two ships dedicated to just picking it up. It has 650 just lying in storage there. That's two ships worth, you know, 600. We're obviously producing it quite quickly, but we might have a shortfall because we're not taking it off the island quickly enough. I've done my job without hellish machinas on my... What's your problem? It's just taking a while. Okay. Hi. Are you a free ship? You're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're paused. Hmm. Get back on your job. <laughs> Obrero supply. Well, apparently that you weren't even really oh you just make people happy although the bombin hats oh yeah revolution bore fruit well that's fine we just i guess the ship was paused for a while i think it's because it was sick a while ago all right well it's just one problem after the other but we're solving things i think we've solved the gas problem it seems fine um the only thing now would be just that cam for wax um so I was thinking, there's not very many things left to do in this save. Obviously, we've just got these little wrinkles here and there. It's not a big deal. Um, but what I was thinking of doing is maybe starting a playthrough of Anno 1404. I thought that might be quite fun to do. I'm by no means an expert in that game, though. You, know, you could argue I'm not one in this game either. We've only got... Like, you know, there's people pushing millions in population. I'm here at 100,000 trying to just keep it level. Granted, I try to make the place look good. There's loads of instances where obviously we can improve efficiency. Um, but still, you know what I mean. Right, anyways, I was just thinking of doing that, just to supplement it, because I don't want to just artificially be like, oh, we got to do Anno, just because Anno 1800's there. Um, I want the series to be as good as it can be. I want to always have an episode where we're showing something new, doing something new, playing with the DLC, etc. So until the DLCs come out, I thought maybe 1404 might be a good stopgap, and we could jump in and then have both going at the same time. There's no reason not to be able to do that. It's nice doing the overhauls, I want to overhaul islands like this, but of course there's DLC coming for this place, so I just feel like it's going to have to be redone anyway, you know? This island's awesome. I love this one. 
Um, as for the old world, obviously there's still more to be done here. I've gotten pretty much all the houses I want. I don't think I'm really ever going to go for too much more. Maybe a couple extra investors, or we could level them up um, into high-rise. But other than that, it's really just now about determining a layout and filling out the place. But I kind of want to wait for the DLCs just to see what we get. We might get some cool ornaments or items or something. Uh, then maybe we'll have a final war with Arthur and that'll be it. So we just did this island, right? That was a complicated one to do. So it's done. That is done. <laughs> and whenever I add to it now, I'll add within that theme. Perfect. Love to see it. No problems. Everyone's happy. So yeah, I'll look behind the scenes at what's going on with that camp war. I'm guessing you just need another ship on the line. I'm guessing that's it. No, we're just not taking away fast enough, really. Um, one last thing, actually, I just want to check before I wrap it up. Is we're not taking it away fast enough. Is it also just maxed out here without being taken away? Yeah, kind of. It's close to it. I feel like that's our problem. There's just not enough ships are... Um, taking it away freeing up the roots and that's why we're just like dumping it in here and we can't we can't even like offload it so new world to old world we have one ship dedicated to doing that well there i think that's the problem we're probably just not clearing out the storage fast enough one ship moving all the camphor wax from here the new world to the old world that is not correct no sir Especially if we've got two just dealing with these islands. Obviously you need like two or even three taking them away then. Um, so yeah, I'll have to improve that. We need more ships. We got the influence for it though. Um, I don't necessarily think I'm going to need all four of those airships. Maybe I'll retire one of them and then get um, two more regular cargo ships. And get moving stuff in between sessions. All right, that's going to be it. I hope people enjoyed the mega time lapse. Arguably, probably a little too long, but I did cut it down as much as I possibly could. So hopefully people enjoyed it. And that's pretty much it. It's going to be it for the episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one, whenever that's going to be. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching. And remember, if you want to support the channel directly, you can click the join button to become a channel member. Doing so will get your name in the credits as well as loyalty badges and emotes to use in the comments. You'll also get exclusive access to my Discord where there's dedicated channels for each series I'm doing. And it's a great place just to meet others and make some friends. 